In southeastern Ontario, Canada, sits a little town named Chatsworth. Chatsworth is known to be the home of Helen Latita Mooney, also known as Nellie McClung. Nellie McClung, a Canadian politician who was born on the 20th of October, 1873, who grew up to be one of Canada's most famous women. Nellie McClung grew up in a family that was quite poor. She began formal schooling at the age of 10 in 1980 and finished school when she was 16 years old. In 1896, at the age of 23, Nellie McClung married a pharmacist. They later had five children. Nellie McClung was a prolific writer. In 1908, she produced her first book called Sowing Seeds in Danny, which sold over 100,000 copies. Way back in 1908, that was a lot of books. From 1911 to 1915, while living in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Nellie McClung fought for women's suffrage, which means women's rights to vote. During 1914 and 1915, Nellie McClung campaigned in the Manitoba provincial elections for the Liberal Party in order to take a stand for voting of women. The Liberal Party lost in 1914, but won the elections in 1915. Nellie McClung was known to be an intelligent and humorous speaker. She sometimes used interesting approaches, like a mock parliament, to emphasize how sexist and unfair it was for women to be denied the right to vote. In January 1916, Nellie McClung's efforts finally paid off when Manitoba became the first province in Canada to grant women the right to vote. But by then, Nellie McClung had already moved to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. While Nellie McClung lived in Edmonton, she continued taking a stand on women's suffrage. She also advocated for dental and medical care for school-aged children, the right for married women to own property and land, and mother's allowances to help cover the cost of raising children. She also fought for factory safety laws and many other useful changes in laws. One issue which she supported was eugenics, specifically lobbying so that people who were considered as simple-minded and people with disabilities weren't allowed to have any babies or raise children. Nowadays, most people would not agree to that because it would be against people's human rights. Nellie McClung sat as a Liberal member of the Alberta government from 1921 to 1926. Then, in 1927, she worked with four other women on the biggest legal challenge of her life. Together with the four like-minded women, they were known as the Famous Five or the Valiant Five. Together, they fought for women's rights and suffrage at the national level. In 1927, the five activists took their challenge, known as the Persons Case, all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada to have women declared qualified persons who were able to become senators. Although the Supreme Court decided against them, they did not give up, taking their challenge all the way to Britain. In 1928, the British Privy Council disagreed with the decision made by the Supreme Court and officially declared women persons. Throughout her life, Nellie McClung participated in and helped start many organizations, such as the Winnipeg Political Equality League, the Federated Women's Institutes of Canada, which at that time was the largest adult education movement in Canada, and the Women's Institute of Edmonton of which she became the first president. She was also active in the Canadian Authors Association, the Canadian Women's Press Club, the Methodist Church of Canada, and the Calgary Women's Literary Club, among others. In 1936, Nellie McClung became a governor of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, also known as CBC. Sadly, Nellie McClung died on the 1st of September, 1951 in Victoria, British Columbia. Nellie McClung was named a person of national historic significance and is remembered to be one of the most important activists in Canada. Without Nellie McClung, 
Canadian women would not have the rights they have now. These days, you can go see statues of her and the famous five all around Canada.